It's Rusty Diamond, motherfucker. Yo, man. Boom, Miss Rusty. What is happening, everybody? It is some day of the week. It is Monday. Second podcast here today because Monday is a two day, I guess. Today is Monday. Two podcasts today. So thank you, everyone, for listening here on the Quantum Global Broadcasting Network, QGBN, with other great shows such as When the Gloves Come Off, the Thinking Man's Pro Wrestling Podcast. This is it with Lizzie and Saved by the Ben. And this is brought to you by Stone Reef Productions. Hardcore comedy, hypnosis is great. Fred Ben Savage's Buck and sockemup.org. Boom! Nailing all that stuff today. Dude, thank you. Dude, thank you. Thank you for being here. And today, I'm going to bring on my special guest right here, right now. Second special guest of the day. We have Jordan right here, right now. Jordan Hi. Maxwell. Hey, how you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? Good, good to have you back. If you haven't, yes. go back, go back to, I don't know when it was. It was probably a few months ago. So it was end of February. I went back and checked earlier because I was like, geez, when was that? So it was around the end of February, like the last day or so. Okay. So yeah, a little more than three months. So yeah. Uh, so how, how's everything been going? What's, what's progressed since February. Yes, uh, pretty much everything, which is good. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, so I've been connecting to more Reiki clients. I know we talked last time a bit about what Reiki was and um, just the services, different services that I offer. So I've been seeing more clients that way. Um, been doing more readings, of course, you know, keeping up with that. And I've just been working on tons of other projects that um are gonna take time but just so many things in so many areas so i'm currently doing a lot of informational and sort of educational um type things for clients because in the general population really um like if someone were to go to my website and be like oh well what is this and what does that mean and you know how do i know if this is the person that i'm looking for if i'm dealing with this specific thing or should i go see someone else so i'm working on a lot of educational material um right now for people so they can just have a clear guide of where to go and how to deal with the things that they have going on is that all going up on your pot or not your podcast you got me <laughs> i got i'm trying to put this in your head i guess um I onto know. your website <laughs> um so i'm not sure if everything will go onto my website so one of the things i'm specifically working on is like a practitioner guide um, because, you know, we hear the word psychic and we hear the word medium and the word channeler and intuitive. And then you might hear a Reiki healer or quantum physicist or hypnotist. And it's like, oh, my gosh, like who does what and what does it all mean? So <laughs> that's one specific thing I'm working on is kind of having a guide for people to be like, OK, so they have a clear direction of who they need to work with and, you know, know that they're getting the right thing because it's like, you know, let's say you break your foot. Well, you're not going to go to the ophthalmologist, you know, <laughs> even though it's Probably a doctor, not. like you want to go to the right doctor for the right thing. So um, that's one thing I'll probably add to my website. But besides that, I mostly post um, informational content and just inspirational things on my social media pages. So then are you going to have like a flow chart or something where it's like, do you have this going on? If yes, go to this. If no, go to this and then, okay. So if this is the case for yes, uh, are you having this happen or are you having this happen? Uh, like a choose your own adventure kind of a, a deal. Sort of. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it sort. sort of is like that. Um, it's actually interesting that you mentioned that because another one of the guides I'm kind of working on is like when you feel blank or when you feel you know anxious or overwhelmed or when you're feeling sad or when you're heartbroken or when you're, you know, panicking and that'll kind of be more of a flow chart vibe um, of, you know, you go to, okay, I'm feeling anxious. And then I'll have a list of things that you can do at home to work with your energy to help anxiety or to help um, ground you and bring you back, you know, like 
<laughs> to center yourself. So um, not yeah. as for the practitioner guide, that one is more definitely informational, but um, pretty much like you said, that'll be the other type that I'm working on. So yeah, sort of. <laughs> okay. And then, so have you kind of found a, a certain part of what you do that you're that you've really ended up enjoying uh, to kind of, I mean, it's hard to be like, oh, I, you know, yeah, specialize in something. And then a lot of times it can be, uh, I don't know, I don't, I don't like it when someone says to me, oh, why don't you just go and focus on one thing? Yeah, that's no, not that's really not my me. thing. <laughs> and, and so, yeah, um, is there, I mean, so that's not you. So, I mean, that's, I guess not that. Really, so, well, um, in my Reiki and my card readings, I'm definitely noticing, of course, more accuracy. The more you practice something, the better you get at it. So I'm noticing more accuracy, more intuitiveness, and um, personally, a stronger sense or ability to connect to my clients and work with them. So in that aspect, but sort of like you said, I'm what my friend would call a renaissance woman. I do a little bit of a lot, <laughs> yeah. of many different things. So um, of course, Reiki is very near and dear to my heart. But as a, you know, I label myself as a holistic practitioner or a holistic healer because I offer so many modalities and I don't want to basically put myself in a box and say, oh, well, I only do these couple of things, which I don't do it all, but I do a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, one thing I have been focusing on lately, um, I know last time we talked about, had some things I was working on, but I couldn't share at the time. But one thing that I've been doing since the end of February is I've been in a um, adaptive yoga teacher training. So I've been training to become a yoga teacher and I actually finish here in a couple of weeks. So oh, another thing. <laughs> congratulations. Thank you. And um, that's been a really amazing journey just because I like yoga in general and the type of yoga that I'm um, being taught in is trauma informed. So working with people who have cancer, PTSD, um, anxiety, depression, mental illness, working with children, basically working with vulnerable groups. So it's been a really just amazing time with the studio that I'm working at and learning on top of the things I already know and being able to incorporate that into my business and offer more ways to help people. So that's the goal. <laughs> <laughs> so what kind of, uh, for someone or what was the word you said? Um, for someone that you're going to work with, how, uh, how is that going to be different than with the extra steps and, uh, benefits that you offer for someone who you said has what you know can't or or you know PTSD or children or anxiety what what what's kind of different what's the extra bit of help there with mm -hmm. the training um so like one of my Reiki clients that's been coming to see me for about two months now he um he has kidney cancer and we've worked a lot, a lot with him. And of course he's working with other professionals outside of it. Um, but I was telling him, I was like, hey, I'm um, becoming a yoga teacher. And he was like, oh, well, I just started yoga at the VA and it's really helping me, you know, connect to myself and learn how to feel things in my body and identify, just identify your feelings in your body basically. Um, Cause when you work, bring it up, you can work through it and you can release it. And ultimately that helps you feel better in your mind, your body and your spirit holistically. So um, I really like that. I just have that sort of advantage to be like, I'm able to work with, you know, people spiritually and energetically, but now I'm also able to benefit them um, in a physical way as well. So like, if I have a client that's like, oh, I would love to start doing yoga. Okay. Well book a private yoga session with me or get a package of yoga sessions with me. And Obviously, depending upon the client, if it's a senior client or um, someone, you know, like you mentioned with mental illness, like I tailor the yoga experience to that specifically. So like someone with a lot of sexual trauma, you're not going to put them in certain yoga positions because that could be very triggering for them or same thing with PTSD, anxiety um, and things like that. So it just gives you a really mindful approach to help, you know, the people that I work with. Sure. And so. 
when did that start uh, becoming something that people were realizing that this is something that needs to be more specialized? I mean, was this kind of, I mean, I can imagine it'd be pretty difficult for someone going into a yoga class and experiencing those things after whatever had happened in the past. And um, so it was that kind of, it, it came from that and it just was able to, you know, facilitate those who would have to, you know, endure that otherwise. Because I mean, I assume the yoga teachers aren't doing that you know, as, you know, uh, intentionally, they're not trying to, you know, uh, trigger someone. And I wouldn't have thought of anything yoga be triggering at all. And right. <laughs> to find out that it is, um, that's interesting. It is. And that's, you know, part of our training, because you don't think of yoga as a triggering experience. And you you know, you think of hyperflexibility and blonde women doing all these crazy poses <laughs> on the beach and, you know, hosting things like that. So um, that's what I think is really special about this type of yoga teacher training is, like I mentioned, it is trauma-informed. And I'm not sure specifically when trauma-informed yoga, you know, kind of came to be. I know it's been around for a while, but um, I'm just going to assume just through psych psychological research and then, you know, just yoga in general and seeing the benefits of yoga It's you know, same as, you know, people say, oh, you're depressed. Oh, go work out. It's good to work out. It's good to be around friends. It's good to do things like that. Um, so just creating that connection between how, because when you have trauma in your body, you're disconnected from your body. When you experience traumatic things, you're not connected to yourself. You're not connected to the world around you. You're not connected to the people around you. And the purpose of yoga is to basically reestablish that connection with the self. And then ultimately you're able to reestablish it with the way that you feel in your community. And like I said, then you're able to um, work through it. I'm not going to say it makes it easier, but it gives you another option to, um, to, you know, do those things. So can be really informative for both the teacher and the student. And um, you also really have to be aware of yourself as well. Like if something, and we always stress this as teachers, like if something doesn't feel good or something is really emotional, like don't do it. Like we're not gonna ever force you to do, you know, something, right. um, that would be harmful because ultimately this is an experience to honor yourself and take care of yourself, so. So is there other ways? So if someone, I mean, you said to be able to work through the triggers um is that something that could go along with your other training to be able to work with that uh so and i mean with i assume with being in yoga and with reiki and other modalities such as that you know the the best time to work on those is when you're extremely relaxed like if the more relaxed you are the better and easier that work is going to be um it's not gonna i mean it's, you're not gonna be in a better situation than that to be able to work through it so absolutely i mean i i hope that there's some sort of some connection with that to be able to help out people um while they're doing yoga and so is so okay someone who's never done yoga is the first thing they're going to be doing is it are you starting out with breathing or are you going right into simple poses yeah so um i like to start my classes by introducing myself and just establishing some ground rules because sometimes people are beginners sometimes people have gone to yoga on and off for years or some people are really consistent so just establishing some ground rules. Like I said, you know, if it doesn't feel good for you today, don't do it. You know, this is your practice. This is something that's for you. It's very, you know, you centered. So just because the teacher is doing something or someone else in the class is doing something, it gives you the chance to basically release that need to also do it and honor yourself and say, hey, like, that's cool, but I don't feel like doing that today. It doesn't feel good. And that's fine, you know? So, yeah. Well, also um, a lot of agency and a lot of freedom in moving their bodies, which is super important if that agency has been taken away from you um, 
through trauma or, you know, through abuse and things like that. So, you know, you're giving them that freedom to decide for themselves, which is also really beneficial. And also with yoga classes, um, I could specifically host like yoga for anxiety or yoga for PTSD or yoga for seniors and things like that. But more often than not, I'm not going, I'm not going to say that, oh, this is yoga for anxiety today. Like I'm going to do, I'm going to know that in my head and I'm going to do poses that I know relate to that, that are going to make them feel better, but they're not going to know that I'm intentional. Right. <laughs> so now I do like to do the introductions and I like to start with um, some breath work, like you just said, because connecting to your breath, breath work is really important for regulating your nervous system, you know, your parasympathetic and your sympathetic. So if you're in constant, like, like fight or flight mode, like, no, you're not relaxing to do your yoga practice. So we always take a couple minutes to ground and center ourselves, maybe set an intention. Um, and then we'll start with, you know, some easy poses and then work our way through the practice. And then typically at the end of every yoga class, there's a part called Shavasana, um, which is like a four to six minute just rest at the end where people get to, you know, integrate the yoga experience and everything and just relax before they leave the class. So that's pretty much kind of the flow of how it would go. <laughs> and so are the clients able to, I mean, so when, I guess when the clients are coming in, are you going to, uh, or are they going to be telling you, that they have some uh, trauma or anything like that before? Will they tell you or do they, you just kind of find out as you go all of a sudden someone isn't doing something? Do you go up to them and say, what's going on? Or do you just leave it, let them be? Or, yep. And then hopefully they say something to you. Um, so like I was sort of saying, it's really a space to do as much or as little as you want to. I will never come off of my mat and, you know, single someone out in class and be like, hey, what's going on? Because that can also feel very like, okay, now you just singled me out in front of everybody, <laughs> you know, right. um, and I would never approach someone after class because ultimately, similar to, you know, Reiki and things like if someone wants to see me for a certain service or share something with me, like they're going to do that. And I will never push that. Like, even if I have a student, you know, that they come to class and they are good every week and then they come to class one week and they don't do everything or I can tell they're really tired. Like I might say, Hey, you know, I noticed you were tired today. I hope everything's okay, but I'm not going to say, Oh, like you weren't doing everything today. Like what's going on? You know, let's talk about it. Like you never want to do that. So um, it's still, that's still more of the agency piece of it. Like you're welcome to share things with me and you're, you know, you don't have to either. So I, I like that aspect of it as well. And so then uh, how are you going to integrate Reiki and, uh, and readings into yoga? How is that all going to integrate? Um, so great question. So in yoga classes, during that last portion of the class, um, I could walk around the room and possibly give everyone a little bit of Reiki because sometimes, like if I was working at, you know, the Georgia Cancer Center or with a cancer facility here and I had them in a Shavasana, I could walk around the room and give everyone, you know, like a couple minutes of Reiki, which would also help um, clear some of the energetic blockages out as well that could have been brought up during yoga. So that's one way they could go hand in hand. Um, as far as the readings, my readings are fairly independent and it's kind of like a, if you know, you know, and if you believe, you believe <laughs> type thing. Um, but for everything else, that would probably be like my best bet or offering specific yoga classes like, oh, this is a yoga and Reiki session and I only have two or three slots available. So instead of giving 10 people two or three minutes of Reiki, I can give like two or three people like 10 minutes. Um, so I kind of have a lot of freedom to switch it up and, and do things differently, which I like as well. So then when you have your class, do you have, uh, do you send them to your website to, and your website kind of tells them what you do? Or I don't know if people still hand out papers or pamphlets beforehand to be like, hey, this is everything I do. If any of this looks looks uh, interesting as well to you. I mean, you should, you know, 
let me know and we can work on something else too or how's that work so I will put my yoga classes on my website um or I have I have this section where you can look at all of my services, you know, that I offer. So um, I haven't added it yet, but I do need to add it on there, you know, yoga classes. Um, and then, like I just mentioned to you, listing all the different types. So people like know what I'm trained in. And if it's a situation where, oh, I do have PTSD, but I'm not good with groups or I don't want to go to a class. Okay. Well, like I said, book a private session or book a um, series or like get a package of private sessions where, I would then come to you, come to your house. So it would be a little bit more of an intimate setting um, so they could feel comfortable. Um, and then, you know, down the line, if they start to <laughs> feel good enough and they want to, oh, you know, I think I'll join a class this week. Like that's really, really great progress um, for them, both physically, mentally, and emotionally. So does that answer it? <laughs> yep. And then, so if you're uh, going into people's houses, uh, what's, What's kind of your your policy on that one? So in clients' houses. I'm still working through a lot of back end stuff on the the side of offering yoga. So I'm finishing my certification up. We can teach now. So like I am teaching now, but um, as far as offering the private classes, the packages, going to people's houses, um, setting up those kind of back end things for myself. I'm still working on those because it's very important, you know, to be mindful. Like I'm in your space. I'm in your energy. I don't know what's in your house. I don't really, you know, I might not know you. <laughs> so right. uh, I'm still, I'm still working on like that aspect of stuff. But of course I want to consider my safety first of all, and then my client's safety um, in general with just moving their body. You have to be mindful of the things people have and their limitations in their body, because a lot of people don't stretch and they don't work out actively. So like they're very tight and they hold things in their whole life. So they're very tight. And, you know, that takes time to kind of like peeling back the layers of an onion. <laughs> yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. And so are, are people able to, or where, where are people with doing it over Zoom or something similar to that? How are, as far as, yoga or reiki or readings as opposed to in person are people as receptive to it or does it seem like there's a little bit of resistance with that or what's how does that work so um i personally haven't dealt with it yet so it's um hard for me to speak on speak on it a little bit um between what people would but I mean, like everything else is what you prefer and every person is different and every person's unique. So like I said, um, if someone did just want the singular class or, oh, I just want to test this out. Like, sure. Cool. We can do that. And if you like it, cool. If, you know, my style of yoga is not your style. I have plenty of other people I could refer you to, you know, which is um, another really great thing is I can send, you know, if you don't resonate with me. Okay. Well, I know people. I'm not a big power yoga person, but I know people who offer power yoga, so I can send you there and, you know, you can get like your pump on. That's great. Cool. But if you want to really relax and chill, like <laughs> maybe someone will send you to my class or I'll invite you to my class. And also um, a little bit to your last question, I think I missed a part of it. Um, if I do just me being intuitive, if I do since someone in my class um, maybe has more things going on or I feel like they would benefit from Reiki, I might just give them my card. Because I mean, and I can sort of pick up on that energy of people who would be receptive to that type of work versus people who are like, oh, like, wow, that's weird. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, I'm, I'm getting pretty comfortable, like being courageous and being like, hey, like, here's my card. And then if they want to scan the QR code and go look cool, if they make an appointment, cool, if they don't like, it's fine. You know, I did my part just by offering um, and letting them know that there is something else out there for them if, you know, therapy or um, other things aren't available. And I think the part about being able to refer someone else to a different uh, yoga instructor is important to show really that you believe so much in yoga. If like, like if someone does, yeah, someone isn't resonating with you or they want something different, it's okay. It's okay that, but you want them to be able to have that yoga experience because you know how beneficial it is and how you know how life-changing it can be for someone and so 
I think that's pretty important. And then uh, the second one uh, question I was going to ask is, uh, do you have a phone number up on there? Do you have a phone number on your? I do. Yes. Is so it? there's a little contact page um, on my website where you can either send me an email. I I don't know if I, I'm pretty sure I have a phone number up there. I have one on my cards. So. <laughs> is it your personal? Me. and um yeah it is my personal so you know of course, make the boundaries that I set there with that but um I don't mind if people call or text me to set up an appointment if I miss a call I'll leave me a voice message if you know I get a text I'll always get back to you um but then if there's ever you know <laughs> where it's getting a little excessive like I'm I'm okay having that conversation with some people like hey I'm here to help I'm here to guide but I'm I'm not a licensed therapist. I, you know, <laughs> I have my <laughs> bachelor's in psychology. I do not have my master's. Like I can work within my scope and I'm fine telling people that like, Hey, I'm not equipped to handle that. I'm not equipped to deal with that because I wouldn't want someone who's not equipped to deal with my problems trying to help me either. Cause you can't really help me. <laughs> right. Yeah. You don't have the specific training that you need for that. So again, referring, you know, people to, Hey, like, I can definitely help you in this way, but if you're feeling like you need more mental health services, definitely seek a therapist and, you know, here's some therapists in the area that I know, or here's some things, um, other people, because ultimately, like you were just saying, it's not about me. It's not about, it's not really about my business, which sounds weird to say as a business owner, but like, it's not, right. you know, my purpose is to serve and to help the way that I've been helped. So like, if it's not with me, like, that's fine. Because I've also gone places where, hey, oh, I thought this was gonna be really great. And I didn't like the vibe. So it's fine. There's other places. And there's just something for everyone. So I never take it personally. And I, I really just believe like, if you work with me, like, you were drawn to me for a reason. And you were supposed to work with me, even if it was one time, even if it was once a week, you know, so um, yeah, I'm very okay with that. Uh, so one suggestion I was going to make was to get a Google voice number. Um, it is free and it, uh, so you can like pick your number or, you know, some number similar to whatever it is, but then it goes, you know, right to your phone. So like uh, you get the Google voice app, you put it on your phone and it rings just like it's this phone, but it goes through a different phone number. So Pete, you don't have to give away your personal phone number. Uh, and I've found that to be a, a nice boundary to yeah. have as well. So, uh, you know, there's okay. that little bit of things. So I, I feel all right, you know, just telling people my phone number and whoever wants it, you know, can have it. And just yeah, having that little extra bit. I mean, it goes right to my phone, but it's not my phone number. Very nice. I'm, I'm definitely going to look into that because I was hesitant um, in the beginning to do that. But then I was like, well, I'm not getting another phone. So, you know, yeah. Um, but yeah. And if there was any ever any type of extreme case, of course, I can contact AT&T and be like, hey, like, block this number. Or I can block it, you know, from my iPhone. So yeah. But yeah, yeah, I'd do that if I were you uh, and just yeah. have that little extra bit throw, you know, change the phone number on your business cards that you have. And um, I, yeah, it's a nice little flex. And it, you, it's always cool to have a new number with you. You can pick your number yeah, for the most part. True. Yeah. Um, and so let's see. Yeah, I mean, because we, so after we talked the last time, we ended up talking for, I want to say an hour or so afterwards. And I was just like, ah, I should have just kept that recording and last time. And um, I was happy we got to, to talk for so long and really get to um, get into it. And then happy that I got to have you back on and get to, yeah, get, get the update and, you know, see how everything's going. And uh, I know that, yeah, your episode ended up getting a bit of traction so oh cool uh, yeah so yeah doing something right and Actually, uh, um, funny you mentioned that the client that I was just mentioning to you um that's dealing with the kidney things he came in one day and he said I saw a podcast with you on it and I was like you did <laughs> and he was like yep and 
you know, and he was telling me all the things I talked about and da, 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 da. So I was like, I have no clue how he found it, but I just thought it was really cool. Cause I was, I haven't, I don't think I've done any since ours. So it had to be ours. And oh, um, okay. Yeah. And so I just thought that was really interesting that he was able to find it and watch it and continue just to learn a little bit more about me. And um, every time I work with him, our session, our sessions just get better and better. I see him and his wife actually. So if you see this, Hey, <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully it will. So I get to be so far um, Jordan Maxwell's exclusive uh, podcast host here. Yes. So <laughs> feeling pretty good about that. Why it's all right, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, I enjoy being here. I always enjoy our discussions and um, answering all of your questions. So anytime. <laughs> yeah, me too. And so where are people going to get a hold of you here, Jordan? Yes. Yeah, so um, I know we talked a little bit about this before our meeting, but I have a website. That's another. Nice. All right. it's I have a website and it is um, jordanholistichealer.com. So like I said, my Reiki is on there. My readings are on there. Um, there's a couple other things on there. You can actually do Reiki on animals. I don't know if I talked about this last time. No, let's let's talk about this real fast here. Yeah, you can sure. do hypnosis on animals as well. But um, yeah. so doing Reiki on animals, I uh, and also I've heard people, I had uh, someone who is a animal something or other, like, like a like an animal medium or, or something to that effect. But with like dogs or cats that run away, like able to talk to them and like said something I never really thought like the dog, like talking to the dog and the dog was just like, it was my time to leave. I, I did everything I needed to do here. And it's not, it was, that part just was That's crazy so to me. And I, not I talked to someone like that back in January about my own dog. And um, I don't, I don't know if it's the same person, but I talked to someone like that as well. And the connection that they're able to establish and get such clear messages, like from our animals is like scary. <laughs> yeah. And so then what's, what's the Reiki, uh, animal Reiki here? How's that work? So similar to humans, um, dogs also have different energy systems in their bodies. So um, pretty much the same ones as humans, they might have a couple more energy centers. Um, but one thing I posted about on my Instagram page, Jordan Holistic Healer as well, um, I did Reiki on my own dog because she, she had a femoral head ostectomy when she was one years old. So basically they went in and they cut the top of her femur off because it was um, not fitting into the hip joint correctly and she was limping, she couldn't walk. And it just randomly happened one day. Like I woke up and she could not walk. So I did that surgery on her. And from the time she had surgery until, oh my gosh, literally like last year, like a year and a half has passed. She was still limping. She had no muscle in that leg. And so I just thought to myself one day, I was like, well, Reiki, <laughs> you can do Reiki on your dog. Cause that's part of our level one certification is animal Reiki and human Reiki. And as I just worked with her and I worked with the energy center that is connected to the hip area into um, the posterior area of the animal, like, oh my gosh, it was insane. Like <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't limp anymore. She hasn't limped since then. Her muscle is oh. completely like back normal. Like you can still see the scar on her leg, but I mean, we tried everything. We went to the specialist in Charleston twice. We contacted the surgeon who did her surgery just to get more x-rays we worked with a physical therapist for like weeks and weeks and like nothing was seeming to help and until I realized energy like until I realized what I needed to do to support her because the energy center I was working with was the support energy center and needing you know support and foundation blah, blah, blah. I'm like of course I'm a good dog mom like I've had dogs my whole <laughs> life I love my dog but she was needing support and I had to realize she was needing support in other ways that I wasn't giving to her. And then once I was giving her that support, she was better. And I was like, oh my God, it is just like Reiki on humans. Like when you work with the lower root chakra, which is support and where people have back pain and sciatica issues and varicose veins and problems with their lower extremities, um, cause your lower extremities supports you. <laughs> 
you know, once you're able to basically work through those blockages there, it helps relieve those things. It helps with the hip pain. It helps with the back pain. It helps with the, you know, the knees, the ankles, et cetera, et cetera. So um, I started to speak to that more on my page, you know, as an educational thing and talk to a couple people about it. I haven't gotten the chance to do any other animal Reiki yet, but um, also just working, like there's a couple equestrian centers around here. Horses are so like, so in tune with energy and things like that. And I feel like if you just believe your animal is intuitive and, you know, can sense energy, then you should believe that Reiki can work on your animal. Cause like, you know, it's like, you ever had a really bad day and your cat comes and just like nuzzles up to you or your dog comes and sits by you. Like they know how you're feeling, you know, they can pick up on those things. So like, when you come home, your dog can sense if you had a bad day at work, you know, so if they can pick up on that energy, they can pick up on the energy of Reiki to be beneficial as well. So it's a really unique thing that um, I like to offer. And even the AKC, um, the American Kennel Club, it's like a really big, you know, association <laughs> for pets and things. They actually have an article on their website about um, using Reiki for animals as well. So I have that. Oh. Yeah, I mean, I think that would be uh... I mean, is there is there a pretty large dog population where you live, or I mean, wh I mean, what's the kind of big animal around there? Yeah, Not, um, I mean, everyone seems to have. Everyone, yeah, exactly. Everyone seems to have a dog nowadays. So it definitely is. There's so many dogs in my neighborhood. Um, uh, you know, we go to the dog park. Of course, we see dogs there, and because it's Georgia, <laughs> horses. <laughs> <laughs> So, like I said, we have a couple of equestrian centers in the area and around the area. Um, and then there's actually a couple places, not in my town specifically, but in like nearby towns that um, are like bird sanctuaries. So, um, but the cool thing is each animal has different energy centers, but they all have the main ones that we have. They just might have a couple extra ones depending upon the animal. So, you know, get to work with them and help them out. I mean, I think that could be a, an interesting thing going, yeah, stopping by uh, an equestrian center one day and be like, hey, do any of your animals, any of your horses yeah. need some, uh, some re-energization, some Reiki, re some Reiki and, yeah. and get, get feeling good. Um, I'm surprised. There's so many videos on YouTube of people giving Reiki to horses and they just stand there and they just eat it up. But like, they love it. <laughs> so it's yeah. really cool. horses are crazy yeah i wasn't big into horses i didn't really like them and then i had i had a friend uh amy and she had horses i was over at her house one night at a party and uh i went out there just you know i don't know what i was doing i was like oh, i'm gonna go look at the horses and i and I, I just was like okay i like horses this this horse is so cool like yeah. I connected with it and then not long after that I went out and started writing I rode a horse once but that's <laughs> something I wouldn't have never done but yeah they uh they're really with it they're really into whatever is happening so um yeah and uh, then so there was one uh one other thing I was gonna say um but uh also i guess this is my nod sponsor yet but should be a sponsor hmm. i hope sometime soon is uh opus.pro not a sponsor but um opu i'm gonna put this in the chat here uh you can take any youtube video up to two uh, hours any video youtube video up to two hours you copy the link mm -hmm. and you put it into there you just drop it in there paste it in there and then you ask you for your email address yeah and then and somewhere between 10 minutes and an hour it'll give you 10 to 15 clips that are um all ai made and it will have it set up like the youtube shorts or the tiktok videos where it's you know filmed like that and it has all the the words across the screen and everything interesting uh, yeah, and it's free. So if you're uh, wanting to clip, you know, clip out either one of our videos, if you need some more content for something, 
easy way to do that. Uh, yeah. And so. Yes. Thank you for sharing that too. And what was the other? Could you Google voice. Google voice. Okay, cool. Yeah. So I remember that. <laughs> yeah. Not, not my sponsors, but I, I definitely am all in favor of those two, two things there. Yeah, and so, good. yeah, thank you again, Jordan. Uh, I'm really happy we thank got you. to have this time and I'll probably have you back in a few months again. So fantastic. Uh, I have yeah. We'll have more to share then, of course, for sure. So I appreciate Wonderful. it. I hope you have a good rest of your day too. You too. All right. We'll talk soon then. All right. All right. Bye. All right. That's Jordan Maxwell doing it. Uh, get a hold of her. She's cool. I really have enjoyed talking with her. Like I said, I I think we recorded maybe a half hour last time. Then I talked to her for an hour afterwards and just said, I, I got to have her back on. I like talking with her. And yeah, she, she's good, good people. So um, yeah, get a hold of Jordan. And thanks everyone for listening to the show on the Quantum Global Broadcasting Network, QGBN, with other shows such as When the Gloves Come Off, the Thinking Man's Pro Wrestling Podcasts. This is it with Lizzie and Saved by the Ben. Sponsored by Fred Ben Savage's book, Hardcore Comedy, Hypnosis is Great, uh, Stonery's Productions, and Sockemup.org. So that is the show, man. Boom! It's Rusty Diamond, motherfucker. It's Rusty Diamond, motherfucker. Ernest! 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 <coughs> yes, Pee-wee. You brought the snacks, right?